Well, praise God. It's so good to be here with you again today. Uh, today we, uh, uh, we, we ask, uh, who are you? Uh, interesting question, huh? Let us pray. Father, give us ears to hear and eyes to see in Jesus' name. Anyone can say I'm a Christian, Muslim, atheist, and Catholic. Or, of course, there are more, uh, like Hindu, Orthodox Jew, and so on. There's, I mean, there's plenty of religions. Call yourself any of these. Uh, calling yourself any of these does not uh, make you one, uh, nor does it save you. Now, the first thing is to realize you need saved, and uh, from what? Uh, no one, uh, no one thing I have. Uh, now, one thing I have learned uh, over the years is this: uh, first, you must understand that there is a, a, a more going on than uh, what you see around you, and believe me, there is much more. Uh, many go into these so-called groups uh, and are led by the nose or by the ear, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, because uh, they just follow them around. So uh, people getting indoctrinated into uh, thinking uh, everyone else is lost but them. And uh, you are lost if you're not following the scriptures. And a lot of a lot of churches... A lot of people aren't following the scripture. They're they're making up stuff as they go, and then they're letting it fit whatever they concoct in their head. Uh, let us look at what uh, uh, lost really is. Lost is being in darkness, not able to find your way. Lost is thinking you know your way, uh, yet you do not. Now I know there's a joke, uh, you know, about. Uh, Men and maps, you know, uh, rather than ask directions, they'd go ahead and get lost. But uh, that's not as funny as you think it is. Because if people don't search out the scriptures, uh, they're not going to find their way. Uh, for if you think you know uh, your way around town and you uh, do not recognize where you are, are you not lost? I was once in a meeting uh, with a group of people uh, and we were all describing how uh, how we came to realize uh, there was more, uh, much more. Uh, this one man intrigued me uh, uh, the the most uh, when he said uh, I was playing baseball uh, with some friends. Uh, the ball rolled over to a flower, and I picked uh, I picked up the uh, the ball by the flower. I could see how intricate the flower uh, was beside me, how perfect the flowers were, and just uh, just the way they are formed. It was then I realized uh, there must be a creator. Now that's important because you have to realize that there is a creator first before you can believe in him, don't you? So uh, this simple act set him on a quest uh, to seek the creator. Uh, which is the Father. Uh, uh, Psalms uh, 97 6 The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Now, uh, <clears throat> now it would be easy to pick, a, pick each of these uh, so called religions apart. Christianity uh, even has uh, some so called uh, perver uh, perversions. Uh, some even thinking they are baptized in the womb, even though, you know, they don't read the scripture or it says that you're born into sin. So you can't be born and saved at the same time and out in the same water. I mean, it has to, even Jesus uh, was uh, born uh, out of the womb, but uh, he was also uh, when and was baptized in, in water. Uh <clears throat> Uh, they go off in, in so many directions, changing uh, the word, uh, uh, changing what the Bible actually says to fit their own agenda. And some are just plain ignorant. I mean, uh, it's, uh, 
I mean, they they won't listen. Uh, uh, you know, a fool uh, uh, won't listen to instruction. Muslims have uh, also perverted their their own religion, although uh, it's 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 an occult. But uh, they've uh, they've perverted. Uh, the wording of uh, of uh, of their scriptures uh, it it's uh, uh, just to fit uh, something that's not true uh, they they've distorted the history altogether and they don't care about history they just want uh, you know their their whole Bible is about killing people murder and sex that's the only thing that that religion is about or cult it's a cult Making it up as a go, even the even the words of the Quran are are the exact uh, match for Satan in the Christian Bible. Atheists, uh, what can I say? I guess I can uh, use the words of the Bible, uh, uh, where it says only a fool says uh, there is no God. As for the Vatican and Pope uh, going through the motions yet not worshiping a creator uh, at all. That's why there's so much perversion in that whole religion. Of course, there is much uh, more could be said. Uh, in fact, uh, a book could be written on each one. However, for, for this point, uh, many are in darkness, no matter what they call themselves. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian or not. If you're if you're not following the scripture, uh, it it doesn't matter. That, that's the inspired word of God, and and you have to realize that that's what that is, and it's the only way you can be saved is to to read it and uh, follow it. As I was saying in uh, at the start of this, uh, first you must understand uh, that there is more than than you than you see in the flesh uh, in this world. Uh, you must come to understand that uh, all you could do, all you could not have happened, uh, all this could not have happened by chance. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time reading today. Everything on earth depends on the, the next thing for it to for it to grow and uh, to prosper. Just as the flower needs to be, uh, the, uh, well, the, the bee also needs the flower. Uh, the bee needs honey to reproduce. Uh, the bee pollinates the flower, plants, and uh, so on, even corn and everything else. So from uh, so first, you must see there uh, there is something more. Uh, there would have to be more for for us to be all intertwined. But if something happens to one part and and it hurts uh, in another area, something happens to the bees. Uh, the corn crop doesn't go as well. And that affects us. So, uh, as for as for myself, I had no uh, comprehension of a creator. Even though I had been told there was a God, and I didn't say there wasn't one. I didn't feel like there wasn't one. I kind of thought there might be. I mean, they said it was. So, but I give him no thought. Uh, let alone that there that what they really meant. I didn't know what they really meant. Well, one day, uh, for me, I learned uh, there is a God, a creator, and a savior, all in one. And uh, Isaiah uh, 45, 21 tells you that uh, I am both God and savior. So, uh, not me, him. Uh, <clears throat> Once I was invited to church uh, and accepted the invitation, as I stepped through the door, uh, it was real, and uh, it was real as you can get. I was overtaken by the power of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Even though I did not uh, understand it, I, I, I really, uh, I, I mean, the presence of God was just all over me. I was just, I was just full of it, uh, just like I was walking through butter, you know, warm butter. I felt God's presence uh, so strong on me as I watched others worshiping. I just started doing it too. And then, uh, and then, as I said, the Holy Ghost did the uh, get it, did a work on me. He took my heart. I fell in love with the with the Creator. 
or the Father, or you say it any way you want. His hand uh, uh, being on me touched me uh, to my core. Never would I be uh, the same again. I could not get enough. Uh, each day I longed to, uh, to be there uh, to feel his presence. And uh, at that time I was doing roofing, and that's pretty hard work. But I couldn't wait to get done. It wasn't because I wanted to get done with work and that have that hard work, because that that was heavily hard work. Uh, it was because of my desire was toward the Lord, and I wanted to be there in His presence. Not that I didn't feel Him all day long, because I was worshiping all day long. I, I don't think uh, my lips ever stopped praising Him uh, the, all day long. Uh, after being baptized in Jesus' name, uh, one day it happened. I, I gave it all uh, to the Lord, and he filled me with the, the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, there were times I could, uh, I could not believe God uh, did those uh, kind of things. Uh, I was shaken several times there by, I think, in awe. Uh, I guess shaken is really not uh, so... So when I uh, felt that way, I would uh, I would say, Lord, if you if there is a real, uh, uh, if this is real, show me, uh, or get or get me out of here. I mean, I want nothing phony. And uh, you know, a lot of times, I mean, if you don't know something, uh, uh, you might think that's phony. You know, people getting slain by the spirit and so forth. You know, and it may look so phony because there's always somebody there to catch them. Seems like, although nobody was behind me. Sure enough, one day I was watching others uh, being slain by the Spirit. Just, just looked so fake. It did. It, it just looked fake to me. I mean, he would just push on me. It just felt like he was pushing them down uh, with his hand. I mean, he'd anoint them with oil, and uh, they just go back. And I don't know if he was following their hand back, or I don't know, but it looked like to me like he might have been pushing them back. And uh, so I thought it was. Uh, uh, so here you go, Lord. If uh, if this is real, uh, show me or get me out of here. As the pastor stepped in front of me and uh, 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 to pray for me, uh, also I saw a cherubim uh, step in front of me. See, this God showed me after I prayed. And man, that was uh, that was unbelievable. Actually, he stepped in. Uh, uh, before the pastor ever got there, before I ever, ever saw the shadow of, of him oh, through my eyelids. Uh, he spread his wings, and uh, I, I heard a whoosh. And uh, and on the floor I went, uh, speaking in tongues and praising God. Now the pastor himself said, I didn't even touch him. And uh, no, he didn't. So he got showed me how real it was. And, and that's all you have to do is ask. He's waiting. Uh, miracles started flowing as I uh, I would pray uh, for something uh, because I believe what I, uh, the Bible says. You know, He says, "Whatsoever you will ask in my name, I will do it for you." Doubt not in your heart, and you go have it. Uh, while praying, he would uh, he would show me uh, street signs or you know other things and uh, telling me where uh, where he wanted me to go. Many miracles happened because I never doubted uh, what the Bible said was true. One day, uh, the ultimate test of faith came. My daughter, uh, being four, maybe she was a month or so uh, older than that, right around four, uh, uh, lying dead in the street, uh, crushed by a car. That was, uh, if you've ever, if you love your child, if you love your children, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's, uh, it's overwhelming. And uh, God's power running all around me, uh, through me, the Holy Ghost just uh, encompassed me as I, as I prayed over uh, her uh, laying in the road face down. Uh, raised one hand uh, to heaven, which was my left hand. Uh, wave the right one over her body, uh, praying in the spirit. That's praying in tongues. And the Bible tells us to pray always in tongues, because you have a connect. Uh, that's your direct connection with the, with the spirit of God. Now, uh, <clears throat> no fear, no doubt. Uh, as her bones came back together, and the breath of life uh, re-entered her little body, 
She arose and hugged me uh, completely whole. Not even a bruise was found on her. We took her to the hospital, but they couldn't find anything wrong with her. But you could see the tire tracks on her dress for the evidence of it. And then uh, later on, uh, it was uh, uh, seven years later. I think she was, uh, she must have been 11 or 12. And uh, I was praying. And the Lord spoke to me and says, uh, your brother Bob's coming down. And uh, that's when the Lord had me in, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I was doing work down there. And uh, uh, so I said, okay, Lord. Uh, he told me to do what he said. And so uh, uh, as soon as uh, I finished my prayer, I said, amen, uh, or Jesus' name, uh, uh, he, the phone rang, and it was him. I picked it up. He said, uh, Charlie, said, I need a couple I need a break. Uh, I'm going to come down for a couple of weeks if you don't mind. I said, oh, come on down. So he got over. He prepared me for it. And I went to a little, uh, uh, he took me to a little Pentecostal church. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it, was a, it wasn't a real big place. I, there was probably, uh, it was full. Uh, but uh, they were all, uh, they were all sitting there. And I just, uh, we, well, we filed in there and a the pastor came back and gave me uh the microphone, and uh, and I couldn't, what, what in the world am I supposed to do with this, you know? So I got up, started walking up toward the pulpit, and as soon as I started speaking, because the, the only thing that could, uh, I was praying, the only thing that I could uh, think of was my daughter, and she was with me also, and uh, the one that got ran over. And uh, as I started speaking that, they could see the, her body, uh, laying there on the ground and me praying over her. And there was a witness there, and they were yelling, we can see it, we can see it. And the pastor said the same thing and so on. But you see how God works? Uh, I mean, he uh, there's all kind of things that he will do for you if you doubt not in your heart. And you need that uh, in order to, to get through these trials that are coming. Because if you're not ready, uh, you're gonna you, you're going to have to get ready. Because once, uh, once uh, the saints are lifted out of here, uh, and the and the, the man of perdition is uh, is exposed, uh, you're in the tribulation. As soon as he's exposed, you're already you're, you're in the tribulation period, and you're it's and you're going to have to go through it, and you better uh, you better get ready. Uh, at least uh, you know uh, you'll have this video to look at, and hopefully it'll give you understanding then if nothing else for for you have a free will uh, no one can make you uh, do anything it's up to you it really is it's up to you and the Lord uh, uh, you, if, you can't you don't have to do anything you don't want to do uh, but for me I will serve the Lord Jesus Christ and him only will I serve for <clears throat> For I am a son of the living God, Jesus Christ. He says he's both God and Savior. And again, I say that's Isaiah 45:21. And there's no God beside him. That's pretty plain. Uh, <clears throat> we all have choices to make in life. Uh, Joshua 24:15. Uh, and uh, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord... Choose you this day whom you uh, shall serve, whether it be a little god, uh, which your father served uh, before the flood, or uh, a little god uh, of the Amorites. I see that a little god is those are the fallen angels, uh, the uh, uh, the ones that created the Nephilim, which is the Nephilim are the are the offspring of the of the fallen angels. And that's referenced in uh, in Genesis chapter six, verses one through five. And uh, <clears throat> in whose land you dwell, now he's talking to the Israelites here. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, now the gods, which is small uh, g, uh, on the on the other side of the flood, were the fallen angels pretending to be gods. 
uh, and the gods, uh, again, uh, of the Amorites were again fallen angels, and the Amorites were the offspring of uh, giants. That's why that that's who the uh, Israelites uh, went up against. Uh, they went up against giants. Some of them were 36 foot tall. Can you imagine? You know, uh, there's no wonder uh, that they uh, cowered it down. And Caleb and Joshua were the only two that got to go in out of all that generation. Even Moses didn't get to go in because he uh, he, he got angry and uh, sinned. But I think God had a different purpose for him anyway. So, but God took him. He didn't die. If one uh, just looks uh, around and, uh, and sees the things uh, which are visible to see, then only a fool would say in his, uh, there is no God. I mean, there's just too much, uh, too many things, that, and, and it's uh, consistent every year. And all that stuff doesn't come just by happenstance. I mean, uh, uh, in Psalms 53, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. If therefore God kills uh, kills others whom he uh has created, is he a real God? I mean, why would he do that? And that's what the, the Muslims do. And for that matter, what the Hindus do and all. And they're all worshiping the devil, whether they realize it or not. The Luciferians, uh, Illuminati, I mean, there's, uh, you know, uh, there's just so many. Only Satan kills, uh, for he is a father of lies. Even a lie will kill you. Uh, Jesus uh, came to, to set you free uh, from the chaos. Call him him today. With every eye closed and every hand in the air seeking the Father to come into your life and set you free. Let us call upon the Father now and receive uh, whatever we ask and doubt not in our heart. Now, if you have a need, uh, now's the time uh, to ask. And uh, I'm agreeing in prayer with you. And the Bible says that whatever, whatever two will agree is touching anything in heaven or on earth, it shall be done for you, not only in heaven but in earth. That's how much power you got when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. So let us pray. Now, Father, we come to you now, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the Spirit of God. Lord, we thank you for the Spirit of God. Lord, we thank you for the Spirit of God. Break the chains, Lord. Open the eyes. Open the ears. Open the eyes. Open the ears. Open the ears. Give them sound minds. Heal those who are asking, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, Praise God, I thank you for letting me be here with you today. Today, I hope this has helped you uh, some. Uh, and if you have any requests, uh, just uh, leave a note, and I'll uh, I'll be I'll be happy to uh, to make a video for you. So God bless you. Till next time.